Yes, you read the title correctly, and no, I am not sorry in the slightest. So basically, you may or may not have seen, but the gutter tank got a nerf in the most recent patch, and well, it went from being something you need to keep in the back of your head, to being a complete joke. So in this video, I will demonstrate how much of a joke this nerf makes it, and how the pre-patch gutter tank was barely a threat in the first place. After that, I will also respond to some of the arguments I've seen as to why the nerf is justified, and how the pre-patch gutter tank was literal cancer, or something. I would also like to mention that all layer 7 footage you're seeing in this video is of the pre-patch gutter tank. Right, so this patch adds a new parry window to the gutter tank, where if he misses his melee attack, he will slip, take a tiny bit of damage and be parryable while it recovers. All of this doesn't sound that bad on paper, but once you realize how fucking long the recovery window is, that is where the problem arises. Even if you are not trying to parry it, this window is enough for you to set up near lethal amount of damage, if not even lethal with some medium amount of tech. And even if you're not good at executing tech, the amount of damage it can do to it will put it at death's door and you'll likely even end up killing it before it can fire a single rocket. So you might be thinking, okay, well that doesn't sound that bad if baiting its melee is somewhat difficult. It's not. It's really not. Let's also not neglect to mention how the gutter tank also doesn't have that much health in the first place. It has noticeably less health than the swords machine. It has 23, while the swords machine has 30. And if you ever played Cybergrind, you know how easily swords machines are dismantled in bulk. In fact, they only have one health point more than a Cerberus. And prior to Act 2, Cerberus didn't have any weaknesses apart from making the fall of the map, which only worked in Cybergrind, and as of now, in one and only one room of P2, and they have pairing their apple, which is unreliable due to how fast the attack is. Yet I didn't see anyone crying how it should be nerfed immediately because it's bullshit or whatever. Also keep in mind that this is an act free enemy. This is the final part of the game. At this point, you are supposed to be well acquainted with all the game's mechanics, and now the game is testing you to see if you can adapt accordingly. So what is wrong with an enemy that requires you to think before you run in its face? Now as I get into more specific reasons, I thought I might as well respond to some arguments I saw in multiple comment sections on YouTube at the same time as to why the gutter tank was too strong. First of all we have the it's bullshit and unfair, and my response to that is the same thing I said for the minotaur in my violence layer analysis video. If your inputs look like you're having a fucking stroke, then no shit you'll take stupid damage. You can literally dodge its attacks by walking. Fucking walking. So if anyone can explain to me how an enemy which you can dodge by walking is unfair and bullshit, please do because I would love to laugh at that shit. Not to mention, it shoots rockets. No shit Sherlock I know, but do you know what attracts rockets? That's right, magnets. So you can literally create an impenetrable barrier between yourself and the gutter tank so long as there's enough distance between the two. And yes, I do know about the rocket ride. Then I also saw the argument of you cannot heal from it. To that, I have to say multiple things. Number one, best keep the same energy for the Stalker, which is an enemy that is physically impossible to heal from in any way, shape or form. In fact, if you try, it will damage you for 10 points and fill your missing health with hard damage. So should Stalkers be given a parry window because you cannot heal from them? No. So why should the gutter tanks then? Second, I've noticed these are also some of the same people who will say how the screwdriver was not a waste of a railgun charge before the buff. So for those individuals specifically, put two and two together and attach a drill to the gutter tank and there you go, you have a free health fountain. Third thing, they drop mines, which are basically free health and stamina packs. They have a massive parry window which you can use to easily get everything you need without a sweat. And the fourth thing I want to bundle up with yet another argument I saw about how the gutter tank is apparently bad. That being, it's impossible to get close to, which goes against the core design philosophy of Ultra Kill. No, it's not. You can and could, before the nerf, easily get close to it when it fires rockets, get in your burst of damage and heal before getting out. It is not hard so long as you know what you are doing, since while it goes to fire rockets, not only does it loudly announce it by a loud boop, it also cannot even start to consider a melee attack until it's done with the whole process. Therefore, you can get in while it's doing that, to either heal or deal massive damage like with the overpump explosion. I mean shit, that is literally how I dealt with it all the fucking time. And also, all the people that are playing armchair game designer and making retarded statements about how 
X goes against the design philosophy of Ultra Kill because it's somewhat difficult. Not only is that the exact same type of energy that Mayo got rightfully shit on, but it is also retroactively the perfect reason why Hakita would ever say good thing you're not designing Ultra Kill or else it would fucking suck. Because as I explained previously, not only is that statement just a complete lie, but it is also incredibly telling of the mindset people who make such arguments have. They cannot adapt to the game, so they want the game to adapt to them. It is quite literally the same energy as Mayo bitching about V2 being a roadblock to his default Pierce strategy and equally as pathetic. Not to mention, the gutter thing is most of the time not even a priority target, not even in Cybergrind, unless it's literally the only big enemy left. In fact, even then, clearing out trash is often much more beneficial than focusing on the gutter tank, and I had it happen multiple times where its massive size would catch a bunch of projectiles and literally die from neglect, or at the very least be noticeably wounded. Then I heard the argument of, there's no counterplay to it, which again I'm gonna have to call massive bullshit on because not only is there counterplay with the insta kill and the mines which can be parried back into it, there's also freezing the rockets and shooting them, as well as sticking them with the magnet, making the rockets have noticeably reduced range, and also the simple act of DPSing it down. It doesn't have that much fucking health in the first place, so where is the problem? What is the problem? I mean, going back to the servers, DPSing them down and moving on is literally faster than trying to use the rocket launcher on it or the cannonball launcher, and if you have the time and energy to focus on it to that point, then you are not in a position to die from it anyways. And it is the exact same with the gutter tank. All you have to do is mind its existence and you can safely ignore it. And then there's also the argument of I have a hard time dealing with it, so that means it's bad. <laughs> Which, do I even have to say it? I'm pretty sure we all know what this argument boils down to. I need some blood. How the fuck did you do that? I still die martial arts for a specific proposal like did your game relies out with you guys. Skill issue. By the way, one comment I got under that video where I bully gutter tanks with the slab marksman is Oh, now do it with a pre-patch version and yeah, I hate to burst your bubble but if you never bait its melee, it can never slip. And if it never slips, there is literally no difference. And I would also like to include a conversation I had with sibling Neurton V2 over this where he was trying to change my mind about how it didn't need a nerf, but was way too noob. So he starts by showing the patch and I say it didn't need a nerf. He then responds with, they in fact needed a nerf, they were annoying and had no weakness other than freezing the rockets. First of all, annoying is a subjective term. Second, maybe them being annoying is the purpose. Third, you say were, but nothing has changed other than a massive window being added. Fourth, they have plenty of weaknesses and opportunities for you to exploit them, as I already explained. You just didn't experiment because noob. I then also bring up the round trip insta kill and he says, that insta kill was also a very painful process. Well, is a painful process, but I do agree with this. DPS is beater. Having gutter tank staggerable is a good change. Well, yeah, if you suck at the game and need it to eat dirt for 10 eternities, I can very much see why you would think this is a good change. Doesn't change the fact that it's unnecessary and completely overboard, as I have already proven. I then mentioned there's also the simple act of DPSing them down, and I also brought up how the Cybergrind is easier because of them, which... It's not exactly not how they are classified at this moment, but if they are uncommon, that's one less possible virtue or stalker, and if they're special, that's one less possible insurrectionist or mind flayer. Either way, they also eat a bunch of damage from trash and can cause collateral damage to other enemies, as briefly explained. Therefore, they make Cybergrind better by their presence alone. He then says, Every ultra kill enemy at least has a strat. Gutter think before the patch, you would freeze the rockets and hold for the rest. Once again, objectively false as there is way more tech, and once again, this comes down to either lack of experimentation or unwillingness to experiment or just unwillingness to learn its very basic attacks for that matter, to which I mentioned how you can use the mines to your advantage. He also says, Gutter Tank alone has killed me more times in layer 7 than any other enemy. Good for you, anyways. And he says, 
If they decide to spawn in the mines, which they do, more often than not they just punch you and fire rockets. Well, for the punches, don't hug them, and for the rockets, yeah, no shit, otherwise you'd be playing the floor is lava. Yet despite that, they spawn more than enough when left alone, so where is the problem? What is the problem? He then says, that goes against the ultra kill game, well, fuck me, not this shit again. You have to get up close and personal to heal yourself and deal more damage, which you can absolutely do with the gutter tank, and I have the fucking receipts. All the layer 7 footage you've been seeing in this video is pre-patch, recorded within 48 hours of the layer dropping. Yet despite that, I am not only not struggling with the gutter tank whatsoever, but I am also able to exploit its openings and get in and out quick for massive damage with the overpump. You wanna explain that phenomenon to me? And you can all see my ultra kill gameplay. I am not at some unthinkable skill level. Having an open mindset and willingness to learn and adapt goes a long way. And I explain this as well as pointing out obvious telegraphing. I also bring up the stalker again and he says, you can heal from sand at enemies. Yeah, but some easier than others. Still doesn't change my point that the stalker is also an enemy that demands you keep your distance at certain moments, that being its attack and death. Yet I didn't see an uproar about how it's an unfair and bullshit enemy and needs to be removed because no ultra kill game loop. I mean, clearly enemies that spice up the game loop are a foreign concept to these motherfuckers. I point this out and he says, dealing with stalkers is also an easy strat. Get them away from enemies before they can sand them. So is with the gutter tank, they suck at hitting you if you listen to their beeps, and keep your distance I should add. But yeah, you don't have to know where they are to dodge their rockets. That is how blatantly obvious their beep is and how predictable their attack is. They will always try to lob it a short distance ahead of you if you're moving. And once they estimate it, they will not change their mind until the rocket is fired. You simply need to either change your direction, change your speed, or dash at the right time. Which is what you do to avoid tracking attacks in ultra kill all the fucking time, so where is the problem? What is the problem? No, the only strat you had for dealing with the gutter tanks is freezing the rockets. That's it. Once again, false. Refer to the earlier parts of this video. To this, I once again simply say how you can just melt it because, let's be honest, despite insurrectionists and hideous asses having weaknesses, if you see those, you usually just DPS them down. He said, of course you damage it, retard. Man, man, listen to me one second, okay? For a tactic. Retard! You do that with every enemy. I said they are big, they are chunky, and making them turn into pieces is fun. They are also fast, they punch fast and like to fire rockets, it's satisfying when you kill one. I think it's all but confirmed at this point he just never bothered to dodge. I mean, imagine that, a rocket firing enemy fires rockets, I always thought he fired donuts, what the fuck? I said, bitch you're faster, unless you're not, because let's face it, that is a possibility at this point. But they're not fun to deal with, which I disagree with. In fact, they are a contender for my favorite enemy from this update alongside its brother Chaingather from Doom. I know I'm faster, retard. Doesn't change anything. Even with being faster than any enemy, you can still get hit. Yeah, no shit, like, what did you expect? That it's just gonna wander around aimlessly and never hit you? Because if so, you can make it do exactly that. Just stick it with the magnet and stay a medium distance away and it will never damage you so long as the magnet is on it. So there you go, it even leaves behind free mines for you to heal off. Are we seriously going to pretend that an enemy which you can humiliate like that, with a single fucking magnet needs a nerf? And even without that, I stand by what I said in these messages. Ok well, 20 was an obvious over exaggeration but you get my point. I would rather deal with gutter tank spam than virtual spam. And I'm HIV positive that anyone who experienced virtual spam in Cyberland would agree with me here. And yes, I am that serious. Not like it's ever going to happen, but you get the point. Anyways, this is where the conversation derailed into him coping about his skill issue with finding a virtue in a small room and dying to it. Either way, I still stand by the statement that an enemy that creates a fucking wall is infinitely more annoying than the one that fires rockets. So that's gonna conclude it. So yeah. I legitimately haven't heard a single argument for the gutter tank nerf that is not either failure to learn or experiment, playing armchair game designer, 
or straight up lying or presenting false information. At the end of the day, Gutter Tank is just another element in the sandbox, and as such, he is a tool which can be used in the levels to accomplish a specific purpose. Don't like him? Maybe that's the point. However, that doesn't make him a bad element. It's the same story with Doom Eternal and the Marauder. When he was first released, everyone sucked at fighting him, but over time, people grew to like him and learned to kill him in a single cycle, so much so that the game could afford sending up to three of them at once. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to pretend this nerf was justified when the update has been out for barely four days. Bitch, please. No fucking shit you won't know the best way to counter every new enemy when the update is still fresh out of the oven and people didn't have time to experiment. However, that alone is not enough grounds for making such a drastic change, which is a piece of criticism I'm throwing at both to the people who demanded the nerf without at least trying to understand the gutter tank, and to development for overstepping with the nerf. As to how to go about fixing this, it's hard to say. One idea that comes to mind is making the recovery way quicker and therefore reducing the window drastically. I heard a few other ones as well, such as making them enraged once they get up, or limiting this to once per enemy, however, I do not believe these ideas would solve anything since you only need one good slip to get all your damage in, and at that point the machine is as good as dead, if not straight up dead. And while the easiest solution would be an undo button, I do not want the slipping mechanic to be taken away now that it's here, because it is funny and it is a fancy style bonus. However, at the same time, it should be drastically toned down. Maybe increasing the damage but making it take way shorter for the gutter tank to get up? Who knows? I won't pretend to know the answer, however, I do hope this video brings some discussion about this issue and makes certain people a bit more open to learning the gutter tank's mechanics instead of writing it off as a mistake altogether. Seriously, how pathetic is that? In conclusion, the gutter tank is a presence you need to be aware of, however, he is by no means a priority target in any encounter once you recognize his extremely simple attack pattern. The gutter tank doesn't suck, you just suck at dealing with his presence. And that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you to this channel member who embraced the chat doom guy and earned a shout out. Be sure to like and subscribe to boost me in the algorithm. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.